to our broadcast, the broadcast from Edgewood Baptist Church. Tonight we're going to do just a little Bible study, and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy it. It's from John chapter 4, and we're going to look at John chapter 4. If you have your Bible there, open and ready, you open it to John chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading. I'll pick up the reading in verse 31, and we'll read through verse 37. And uh, really focusing on verses 31 through 35, uh, and we have uh, just a couple of points that we want to look at here today in this Bible study. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, go to the Lord in prayer just for a moment. Our Father, Lord, we're thankful for all that you've blessed us with, and during this time when we are watching by video, uh, I pray that you'd just have your hand upon us, and then... Uh, that, the, that the time that we would be able to uh, come back into your house and assemble ourselves together, Lord, that that would be uh, very, very quickly uh, approaching and that we would uh, come together once again and enjoy the uh, fellowship and the worshiping together in your house. And then so, Father, also for this time, Lord, I pray that we'd have our hearts open and have our Bibles open and that we would truly seek to not only understand, but Lord, to apply your word to our lives. And Father, we thank you for all that you do. Thank you for our church, and we thank you, Lord, for safety and health. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Well, our Bible study tonight is entitled, The Spiritual Work in Witnessing. The Spiritual Work in Witnessing, and uh, we'll just jump right into the reading here. It begins in verse 31, and it says, In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, as is speaking of Jesus and his disciples, is when it says his disciples, it's speaking of Jesus, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath Hath any man brought him all to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. Here we want to focus in on a couple of thoughts in this Bible study. When we're thinking of a spiritual work in witnessing, there's an awful lot to be said, and we could go into a whole lot more detail than we are tonight. But what I want you to see here, here is the requirement here. What is the requirement in uh, the spiritual work for witnessing? Well, we know that uh, we all ought to be uh, uh, speaking to people about Jesus and uh, uh, giving gospel tracts is a great way to uh, maybe break the ice with someone and uh, maybe uh, you might be a little skittish or uh, might not have the right words to say or, or feel like you're on the spot and uh, uh, things of that nature. Uh, but, uh, but there's some, uh, some work to be gone into this. Of course, we can prepare. Uh, we can read the tracts. We can uh, uh, tab our Bibles, and we can do all of these things. But we're going to point out a couple of things from the Scriptures, and actually from Jesus and how he's speaking with his disciples here. And uh, these couple of things start off with, number one, I want you to see the requirement. Look at verses 31 through 34. It says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. And so they are concerned with him uh, uh, having not, not eaten at that point. He had, he is, uh, uh, they are, are uh, trying to uh, encourage him and trying to tell him, please, look, we've got this food here, please eat. And then he turns their attention uh, to something a little different when he says, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Well, it seems like they uh, misunderstood here because the pig verse 34 says, Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? 
And so they're discussing among themselves, what, what, did you bring him something to eat? No, did you bring him something to eat? Well, we're, we're trying to convince him to eat, and, and uh, he's saying he already has food. But then in verse 34, it says, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. So he clarifies this. And he, he, uh, he lays down this requirement here. And the requirement is thinking beyond this life. We ought to be thinking beyond the life that now is. Now, many of us think beyond today. We may make plans. We may consider our future. Uh, we may consider the things that we want to do next week or next month or even next year. Uh, but, uh, but Jesus here is, is basically uh, pointing their attention to something even greater. You see, our attention or our thinking patterns ought to have an eternal thing about it. It ought to have a, a ringing about it of, uh, of heaven's glory and knowing that one day we are going to be there. The Bible calls us sojourners in uh, 1 Peter um, chapter 1 and, and uh, 2 even. And, uh, and as we consider ourselves sojourners, we understand we're, this world is not our home. We're just uh, passing through. So what is the requirement? The requirement is thinking beyond this life. Let me ask you, how much do you think beyond this life? How much, do you, how much thought do you give to eternity? How much thought do you give to um, uh, what you'll be doing in heaven and, and how the angels are worshiping? And, and, and all of this, what, what kind of thought do you give here? I believe right here, this, this uh, uh, passage here, because of the verses that you'll read after this, verse 35, 36, and 37, you'll see that Jesus is doing something. He's pointing their attention to something eternal. Uh, they, they were concerned with the here and now. The disciples were concerned with the here and now. They're saying, Master, eat. And of course, we, <laughs> we've got to eat. We've got to, uh, uh, we've got to have uh, some sustenance for our body. Physically, we've got to, uh, got to eat. And, but although they had good intentions, Jesus awakened their minds to eternal matters. And uh, each one of us ought to be daily reminded of the fact of eternity. And uh, it also says, where it says in the, in the verse 34, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Uh, many times Jesus would use the physical things or the things that are readily apparent right in front of them to illustrate something spiritual, something eternal. And this is what he is doing uh, here when he, he says, my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me and to finish his work. And see, we must be reminded, we've got to see that there is uh, something spiritual going on around us. We talk about dressing uh, in the armor of God, uh, and, and that all has to do with a spiritual battle. Uh, we talk about other things that uh, uh, might uh, ring of eternity in our minds, but uh, you think about this, what does, uh, what does time uh, what's the difference between time and eternity? Do you ever think about that? We need to uh, think about the fact of eternity being glorious and, and awesome. But, but when he says the, 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 the fact of um, uh, the harvest, right here he's calling their attention to souls, basically. You see, our mind can be filled with the here and now, and, uh, and we can, as Ephesians 4 verse 17, we can uh, walk in the vanity of our mind uh, as, the, as the Gentiles walk, so to speak, as it says there in Ephesians 4. Uh, and, and there can be an emptiness about our mind, and we can, be, uh, <laughs> we can have uh, this... this um, this idea that we're just filling our time, filling our time. With, I don't know what we're going to do today. I don't know what we're going to do today. Uh, but, but there are eternal matters at stake. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31, the Bible says that the fashion of this world passes away. The Bible also says in Philippians 2 verse 5, it says, uh, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's telling us the Bible over and over will, will remind us of uh, the fact that this world is uh, it's not going to be here as it is right now forever. 
And we need to have our minds set on something uh, a, a little further above the atmosphere. We need to have our minds thinking of the eternal matters because people's souls are at stake, aren't they? And, uh, and I'm so glad that uh, I heard the gospel from a, a young age and I got saved at a young age. Uh, you, you know what? Maybe you can recall your experience too of hearing the gospel of uh, maybe getting a track, maybe speaking to someone about your soul, maybe hearing John 3.16 for the first time. Maybe you can think about that. Maybe you remember that. Well, there are many, many people around us that might not have heard the gospel. Even in, in, uh, in the South, there's, I've spoken to several that haven't heard the gospel. They've heard of Jesus, but they don't, they don't really understand what was he on the cross for. What was, there are people out there like that. And we need to be ready and willing and, uh, and, and go and speak to people about eternal matters. And when we are considering this, when we are concerned with the eternal matters, I think that it will remind us to do so. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 6, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I remember one time when I was out uh, speaking to a number of people uh, uh, at, at, at a flea market and we were witnessing uh, to, to people handing out tracts. And a gentleman walked by and he had a, a t-shirt on of a rock star that had, uh, that had died about a month before that or maybe six weeks prior to that. And he had a t-shirt of that uh, rock star. And I, uh, I, I talked to him just for a second and what I, I caught his attention with the shirt. I said, what's that on your shirt? And he started telling me about uh, the, the rock star. And so then it would open the door to a conversation of spiritual matters because that rock star had just passed away. Reminding us and giving me the opportunity then uh, to say that, you know, he's passed away. We all have to think about eternal matters. We all have to think about the life after this life. We all have to think about uh, heaven or hell. And that gave us an opportunity and I was able to speak with him and give him a, a gospel tract and, and, uh, and, and we should be uh, thinking beyond this life. That's, that, that's the uh, requirement. And the only way to do a good, a good job here on earth is to have our mind uh, focused on the eternal, isn't it? And then I want to call, point your uh, attention here to verse number 35. We're gonna see the reason here, okay? Uh, verse 35 says, Say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, Jesus is speaking to them, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The reason here that we do this spiritual work is the task is urgent. Okay, the task is urgent. He says, Say not ye, there are yet four months. They were at that time still waiting for harvest, anticipating the day when they could enter the field with the tools necessary to reap the harvest. They were at that time thinking about, uh, well, it's not time yet. We, we've got to go in uh, at, at a certain time and then we'll be able to reap the harvest. And he's calling this their, their attention. And then, and then it says, he, he says that there yet four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. It, it could be that Jesus was directing their attention to the uh, oncoming crowd of, of the Samaritans as he said this. Uh, it, it, it could have been a number of things, but as, uh, as you think about Jesus lifting his eyes and probably even pointing in the direction of the field, to, drawing their eyes toward a field of harvest, uh, just waiting and anticipating the day, uh, we need to understand that as we look out on the fields around us, on the, on the fields, and we're talking about the souls out there, okay? Uh, as we look out at the fields, as we look out at the harvest, we need to understand there's souls out there. And, and it says here, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. For they are white already to harvest. He says, they're, they're, they're ready. This harvest here. He's already called their attention from food uh, to the spiritual matters. And now 
he's, he's calling out the harvest, and then he says, but I said, look, look at the fields of harvest. Look, there are plenty of souls around us that we can uh, be ministering to and speaking to. They're white already to harvest. Already, meaning even now, at this very time, Jesus told his disciples that there is a harvest at all times. It says they're white all ready to harvest. And there, there's also, uh, speaking of the, uh, the reapers and, and those that uh, would go in and help, verse 36 it says, And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. See there? Uh, and that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, and another reapeth. You, we, we can see the, the different jobs in, in, uh, and even in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We can see that reflected here too. The, that thought that uh, uh, Paul planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. There's different jobs all along the way. And uh, we may speak to someone over and over and over again about their soul. Or they may have given, been given a gospel track. They may have turned on the radio to a gospel preaching and heard the, the plan of uh, salvation several times uh, before they even get, uh, they, they even ask the Lord to, uh, to save them. And so there are different stages that people may be in, and we can't see their hearts. Our job is to be faithful, though. And so the reason is the task is urgent. People need the Lord. People need to know the saving grace of God. They need to know uh, that, the, that the Lord is good and He's merciful, and they need to know how to walk with them in, in Him in their daily life. And so I want you to think about this for just a moment. If you approached a 100-acre farm, and 100 acres is pretty big, and let's say all of these acres are just filled with, uh, let's take it, it's, it's an apple orchard, so to speak, all right? We'll, we'll just take the apples. They're just filled with apples, and they're your favorite, favorite apples. And the owner says, you go out, and uh, you can get as many apples as you want. Well, you know how to, <laughs> how to preserve them. You know how to make apple butter. You know how to make dried apples and baked apple pie and all these other things that you know and you love. And so you go out, are you going to go get uh, one apple and take it home with you? And that be it. The owner says, go and get as many as you can. Go and get as many as you can. All, all, of, all of them that you want, because there's plenty. Would you go? It, it, now, if you, uh, if you don't, uh, you can wait until the, the apples are uh, just too, too ripe. They, they fall down and they're not good anymore or, or whether they fall off the, uh, uh, the trees or, or whatever. You, would you pass up the opportunity or would you do what you could to get all the apples you could? Well, I'll tell you what I would do, and this is just my thinking. I would say, well, I, th I really like these kind of apples. They're really sweet. They taste good, and, they're good, <laughs> and they, they're good for you. And we can make a bunch of stuff with it. Here's what I would do. I, I would say, well, I've got this friend here, and I've got this friend here, and I've got this friend here, and I've got this friend here. So I'm going to go call 20 of my friends and say, hey, look, I've got this great opportunity where you can get a bunch of apples, and... I'll let you in on this secret. And so we, we all go uh, out there, and well, let's say that 10 of us go, but I invited 20. So 10 of us go, and we're all just taking off all the apples, all the apples, all the, all the apples, all the apples, all the apples that we can. And so the idea is, don't you want as many people to go to heaven with you as possible? Don't you want to see as many people around you, as many of your friends and family and everything, to go out and, and, and that we would, uh, we would minister to them, we would talk with them, that we would uh, uh, witness to them, and, they, and, and so at some point they would get saved. Wouldn't you like to see that? Well, we've got to think about the eternal things, first of all, and then we have to understand that the, ta the task is urgent. And so the task is urgent, the work is ready, and the time is now. There are countless people who need to be saved. Heaven rejoices over one soul. So we need to enter the fields, do the work, 
and, uh, and go out there and just get all the apples we can. We need to get out there and start just seizing the opportunity of speaking with people. Because you know, the time will come when we're able to uh, go and be around people. At this time of this uh, uh, recording, uh, we, we've been at a, 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 a state of, um, uh, well, been declared a state of emergency. And there's a thing called social distancing where we have to stay apart from each other. And many places have uh, closed down re re restaurants that are only doing takeout or drive through or things like that. And, and so at this time, it might not be uh, all that conducive for us to speak with someone one on one because not as many people are out there. But think about this. When the time does come, don't you want to be ready? Don't you want to be armed with the gospel and, uh, and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, as the Bible says? Would, do, do, wouldn't you want to do that? Well, we need to uh, be spiritually minded. We need to think of the things eternal. And then we have to understand the task is urgent. People's souls are at stake. And so would you join with me and we're going to close by another word of prayer. And uh, as we do this, why don't you, with me, uh, I guess make a commitment is, is the way to say it. Make a commitment that when all of this is over and we can get back to, I guess, a, a regular, our regular lives, and we start speaking to people, that we would give out the gospel we would pick up some tracks and start to, uh, speaking to people about their souls. Would you do that? Well, we're going to pray, and that'll be the end of this Bible study. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's uh, uh, an interesting little study here in John 4, and there's certainly more there that could be said. But right now, I'd like for you to bow your heads, and we'll make a commitment together, okay? Our Father, we're so grateful for this passage and thankful that you have here that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was teaching the disciples something here about the harvest, was showing them that we've got to be thinking on eternal matters, and also showing them that the task is urgent. We thank you, Father, for uh, the, the, the job at hand that uh, we are able to do. Every day, you know, the everyday Christian can do this. And they can speak to others about their soul. They can speak to others and hand them a gospel tract. We, we can do a number of things. But, but Father, right now, we just want to commit to you that maybe we just need a plan. Maybe we just need a, a, a number to witness to every day or every week uh, that you would put on our hearts. We're asking you for that. And then, Lord, we want to be faithful. We want to be faithful in giving the gospel out. If you put on our hearts to witness to one person per week, let's say, then Lord, we want to be faithful. We want to be faithful to find that one person every week to speak to. Maybe possibly more. One person a day even. Uh, but Lord, help us to keep that in mind. And uh, not only that, Lord, to be faithful in order to witness to the, these people. Lord, we thank you, Father, for salvation of, of, of ourselves, you know, that, that you have saved us. And then we pray, Father, for more to be saved. This is a lost and dying world, Lord, and as you uh, uh, told, told the disciples to look out on the harvest, Lord, we must be looking out on the harvest too. Help us to do that. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Well. This has been an interesting uh, Bible study, and uh, it's not very deep or anything like that. But I hope it's been something as a reminder that uh, would serve uh, a purpose in your life and mine, that we need to be faithful. Uh, we have the gospel, and we can give that gospel out to people. Be pray, and look forward to the day when we can assemble again in our churches. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.